It looks like Episode 4 Act 2 is coming in hot with this new patch 4.04. The devs promised us that this act they would focus on agent balance and overall game improvement and health. And wow, they did not disappoint with this one. What is going on, Pro Guides family? It is your host, Sergeant Frost. And today, we have the patch 4.04 rundown. We've got a whole lot to cover, as a lot of agents are going to get some big balancing changes. And if you want to make sure you're on top of all the changes, make sure to come check us out at ProGuides.com after watching this video to get some personal advice from our Radiant and Immortal level coaches, because the meta is definitely going to be turned on its head. Link is in the description to get started, and let's get right into it. First up, before we start talking about agent changes, let's look at a general gameplay improvement that should make ability usage with any agents that place utility down. The devs have improved the system used to place abilities at targeted ground locations. This update should make it easier to find valid placement locations in tight spaces. These are the abilities affected. Omen Shrouded Step, Viper's Ultimate, Chamber's Trademark and Ultimate, every single one of Killjoy's abilities, Yoru's Gate Crash, and Sage's Barrier Orb. This is a nice change that will make placing abilities on the ground more transparent and true to where they can be placed instead of having to fiddle around too much. Now, starting off the agent changes, Omen is finally getting some buffs. Omen was down in the gutters for quite a while last year, but this patch is bringing him back with some solid buffs. It is worth noting that Omen did not get a rework so there is nothing new being added into his kit. His dark cover cost is going up to 150, its cooldown has been decreased to 30 seconds, and the projectile speed will be buffed up from 2800 to 6400, which is more than double the old traveling speed. Regarding the rest of his kit, his shadow step got a price decrease, and the pre-teleport delay has been decreased a little bit to make his travels a little bit faster and safer to escape with. His paranoia also got a change that makes it so that players adjacent to Omen don't get hit so you won't have a weird Omen blind interactions that can screw your teammates over. Brimstone, like Omen, was down in the dumps last year even after he received mostly buffs to help him out. This patch, it looks like the devs are doubling down on Brim again as they send some more buffs his way. Brim's Sky Smokes got their deploy time decreased. The deploy radius has been increased ever so slightly and the smoke height is now a bit taller, which means his smokes have been buffed across the board. But that's not the interesting part. The big change that could revolutionize Brimstone involves his Stim Beacon. The Stim Beacon on top of having a fire rate buff now applies a speed boost of 15% to all players that run through it. This is an interesting change that could totally throw teams off, and it's hard to tell if this will be OP or just a decent addition. We will have to wait and see how this change plays out in game before we can make a call on its practicality. But this is the first team-wide speed buff introduced into the game so far, so things are bound to get shaken up in the meta. Hold on to your hats folks, because Astra is getting her entire kit nerfed in patch 4.04. There was some hard balancing done to Astra's kit, since she has been quite overwhelming in the meta for a long time, with a portion of the community even hoping that she gets removed from the game. Since these changes are long, we will summarize what happens to each of her abilities. Let's start from the top with Astra's stars. Astra's star count was reduced. She received a cooldown nerf, and she can also now pick up play stars in buy phase to refund them immediately. And the devs have increased the max placement distance of her stars so that she can reach the furthest corners of the map. Her gravity well got a nerf with the cooldown increase along with its size being decreased and it no longer affects things underneath the ability. Her Nova Pulse also got similar treatment with its cooldown being increased and it no longer affects things under the ability. Moving on to her Nebula Smokes, the cooldown has been increased to 25 seconds. Her cooldowns on her smokes are now sequential instead of simultaneous, which means that her smokes go on cooldown one at a time instead of both at the same time, and the size of her smokes have been increased a bit. And finally, the devs have made some quality of life changes to Astra's astral form. Most of these changes involve her targeting ring, pings being seen while she's in form, and increasing the speed of the overlay while she's coming in and out of the astral form. All things considered, these look like some deadly nerfs to Astra, and it's going to be really questionable whether she's going to be at the top of the meta still after these changes. Across the board, Astra's power level has been toned down and made a lot clunkier. So not only will Astra players have to work with less, they also need to plan a ton more or their stars will just be missing when they need them. Astra isn't the only controller receiving a few nerfs this patch. Viper is also up to bat in patch 4.04. There are also quite a few changes and nerfs to Viper, so let's get into them. The first big change involves Viper's fuel. The fuel drain has been increased by 50% when both her toxic screen and poison cloud are now active. And Viper's fuel bar now turns red when she doesn't have enough fuel. Viper's toxic screen is seeing a few nerfs and changes to make it less oppressive to play against. Its cooldown for redeploying was increased, along with the deactivation delay being decreased and the cooldown timer now starts when the smoke starts dissipating, which is slightly later than before. The devs have also slightly nerfed Viper when she's interacting with KO's suppression by removing the delay to her toxic screen disabling when she's hit with a suppress. Viper's poison cloud ability is more or less receiving the same form of nerfs her toxic screen received. 
its cooldown after deactivating is being increased. The deactivation delay is decreased, the orb now has a yellow light to indicate its cooldown, the cooldown timer now starts on dissipate, and the suppression delay for deactivation has now been removed. And lastly, wrapping up these changes to her abilities, Viper's snakebite duration has been decreased by 1 second. These Viper changes uniquely will definitely tone down Viper very slightly, but it doesn't seem to be something that completely changes how she is played in-game. Astra's changes were more harsh as they crippled her ability to do what she was known for which is smoke and dish out CC like a sentinel. Viper is getting tweaks to her gas that make it clunkier and riskier to use at times to make her a bit more fair to fight against. Now, for the rework that everyone and their mother has been waiting for, Yoru's rework is finally dropping this patch, and we have all the new information for his abilities. Remember to check out our only Yoru guide you'll ever need covering his new rework which will be out in the coming days. Let's get into the details though. The most changed ability in Yoru's kit is his Fake Out, as it's a totally new ability. Fake Out's footsteps have been replaced by a live-action Yoru clone that runs out just like him, and when it's shot, it turns around to the person that shot it and flashes. He now has decreased charges of this ability. If you right-click, you can make this ability stationary, and the decoy is similar to the real Yoru in that it moves and runs like him and has a full 150 HP. Yoru's Gate Crash ability hasn't changed too much, but it has some new numbers and functions. For instance, his charges for this ability have been increased. The cooldown charge refresh timer has been removed in favor for the 2 kill reset system. Gate Crash now has the ability to be faked out when you press F. When this happens, it will leave a mark on the ground where the fake TP happened, and it will play the audio and visual cue that would normally happen if Yoru did actually take the teleport. On the back end of this ability, the speed of Gate Crash's beacon travel has been increased. The time it takes for him to activate and teleport to the beacon has been decreased from 1.5 seconds to just 0.5 seconds, and the in-game audio range for when this thing can be heard has been almost halved. Dimensional Drift has received some pretty big changes, and they will definitely change how people use his ultimate. The duration of his ultimate has been increased. Yoru is now completely invisible to enemies, the unequipped delay has been doubled, his footsteps can now be heard at longer range, and the most important change is that Yoru can now cast all of his utility out of his ultimate. This change means that it's more dangerous to just pop out of his Dimensional Drift with a shorty, but to balance out the longer time, you can use flashes or anything at your disposal to outplay your enemies as well as remain completely invisible even if you're close up. Yoru's rework was a long time coming, and we believe these changes can potentially help him compete with the best duelist kits in the meta. Remember that if you want to learn more about Yoru's rework in greater detail, we will make a new Yoru guide that will be coming out soon. Now let's move on to the map updates of this patch. As Icebox is getting some substantial reworks to its bomb sites in an effort to make the map's gameplay feel fresher and more complex. But first, as a side note, Ascent is getting a minor change so that the B orb can now be taken from the lower box instead of having to jump on top of it to pick it up. Now let's jump into Icebox. Icebox got a whole host of changes to both of its bomb sites in this patch for the better. The only confusing thing is where Riot was trying to take this rework as they helped out both the attacking and defending sides with changes inside of both of these bomb sites. Is Icebox attacker or defender sided? We can't call it for sure until we see how these map changes play out over the course of this act. But let's summarize everything new. If you look at the graphics on screen, there have been some changes made to the B green area of the B side of the map. The devs have stated that they want to create more room for the attackers to move around and make them more comfortable as they approach the B bomb site. In our opinion, this benefits attackers because it gives them more room to spread out, and it makes it harder for AWPers to pick off the first attacker they see, now that there is a side entrance to B main that has been added for attacker safety. This change along with B main's overall width being increased is a nice healthy change for the map. The next B side of the map change is the rotation of the yellow container, and the addition of the double crates on the side. The devs have stated that they don't want attackers anchoring behind the crate in all post plan situations just to hide and stall the defenders. This change should increase the options attackers have while holding onto the post plan, but at the same time, this also gives defenders more options for holding the B side as well from the yellow box instead of being pushed off immediately every time someone throws utility at it. The biggest change to the B site involves the actual plant space itself. The lower container was removed and the geometry adjusted into a cubby facing green. The doorway on the upper container was widened and the position adjusted. This should allow players to better isolate fights around the site and make utility usable and more meaningful. The outer wall on B site and crane has been brought in towards the site to help narrow the site and allow other controllers smokes to be more effective. This was an effort to make the other controllers viable on this side of the map instead of every team feeling like they need a viper and sage in order to take B site. Wrapping up the B-Site changes, the back building in CT spawn has been closed off to give attackers more room to take space outside of site, and the plant zone on B-Site was adjusted as well. This changes to encourage more spike plant diversity while retaining some safer defaults to work with. You can now also plant on the bridge from kitchen to upper container as well. While the bomb sites were the focus for this map rework, Mid received a few notable changes as well. 
The back wall and kitchen was pushed back to make the space feel more airy and comfortable for attackers to spread out in. Crates have been added to Orange Lane to block the line of sight from under tube to danger. And boiler ramp has been simplified and narrowed a bit. Smokes will now fully cover boiler and players should find head peaks from ramp more predictable. A site doesn't have any structural changes like B site, only some minor additions and subtractions to the site. Some examples is the addition of a radionite crate in backside A, the head peak on the attacker side pipes has been removed, and the doorway into A has been lowered to prevent jet players from shooting at your feet while you're still rotating over to retake. And that rounds it out for the icebox changes. Overall, these could be some really interesting changes to icebox. They didn't overhaul the map's overall structure, but they managed to add and subtract in meaningful ways to address the problems the community had with the B and A bomb sites. This rework is helpful, but time will tell if it ultimately helps the map feel less stale and allow for more agent combinations. For competitive updates, the devs are introducing initial testing of a new deterministic map system in the LATAM region. The main purpose of this system is to increase the variety of maps that players will encounter. If there are no issues, they plan to activate this system for all regions in the next few days up to the next week. For a small summary, the deterministic map system follows three rules. It will look at all maps that players have played over the last five games for that mode. The system will remove any maps that a player has played twice in the past five maps. And the system will pick the least played map. This system is interesting as its main goal is trying to prevent situations where a player gets the same map three times or more in a row during a play session. Hopefully this system is stable and actually works, because this could freshen up the ranked experience for everyone, especially now that a system will make it harder for the game to repeat maps multiple times in a row. Now let's talk about bug fixes. There are a few bug fixes to Cypher's Tripwire, Viper's Toxic Screen, Yoru's Gate Crash, KO's Ultimate, and Chamber's TP that are all quality of life fixes. The devs have fixed an issue with AFK's in Escalation game mode, the devs have fixed a bug where the timer would overlap itself while viewing the mega map as an observer, and finally they have fixed an issue where you could tap the scroll wheel to activate the diffuse audio without initially initiating the diffuse. Well guys, that's all we have for the patch 4.04 rundown. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com to gain some access to some truly amazing coaching. This has been Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind this act.